So we're here today to talk about Jack. Jack, Jack. Jack, Jack. Talk to me, just basics. Fill me in here. What do you want me to know and understand about <clears throat> Jack's condition? Jack is a very special baby. Um, his heart function was found to be weak when he presented with what seemed like a COVID infection. I think that was the first time the parents came to know that he has what we call cardiomyopathy. We abbreviate it as DCM, dilated cardiomyopathy. You'll see his bed is kind of bouncing right now. It's actually um, what we use for older kids as like a lung clearance thing. So it's kind of like if you go like, ha, 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 it gives like a coughing motion. Him, however, it gives like a nice rocking motion. We lovingly call it around the unit a bouncy bed. <laughs> and it's really soothing for most of our babies. Many patients of dilated cardiomyopathy do good with medical treatment and um, do good for quite a few years and may or may not need heart transplantation. But in his case, uh, uh, even after medical therapy, he continued to require uh, a lot of support in terms of medications that improve the squeeze of the heart, oxygen. So that's when we start thinking about more than just medicines. And that's where the where heart transplantation comes in as a treatment option because it is kind of the gold standard for dilated cardiomyopathy that's refractory to medical treatment. And once we evaluated Jack Jack for a heart transplantation, um, he checked all the boxes and he was considered a candidate and we offered the parents the treatment. And then for a period of time, we tried to optimize the medical treatment as a waiting for heart transplantation but we know typically that uh, the waiting period sadly for babies his size and age is up to six months mm. and when the heart function is that weak uh, it's very difficult and challenging to just uh, pass those six months on medications that improve squeeze of the heart and support the heart so we knew it in the back of the mind that someday we will need uh, additional uh, support. So in his case, uh, it would be supporting the left ventricle. So it's also called left ventricular assist device or LVAD. So currently he's being supported on that and waiting mm -hmm. for a heart. Yeah, he's, he's been waiting. So the, the amount of time he's been waiting is typical for children, it for is, young pediatrics. It is. Okay. It's probably one third to half the way. That, mm -hmm. Do you know roughly how many you all perform a year? How many heart transplants? We do about uh, eight to ten mm -hmm. uh, heart transplants a year. So we would be we, we are the one of the biggest in the DMV area. Everyone uh, in in the team, especially myself, is very passionate about uh, the heart transplantation. And every time I take a heart out, put a new one in, and it starts beating, it's it's miraculous. It's it never uh, ceases to impress me, you know. When you think of that moment, that maybe, hopefully, when Jack has that moment and you yeah. help him do that, I mean, the smile on your face yeah. says a lot yeah. about it. Yeah. So that's, that's the goal and the hope, yeah. yes. Yeah. It's six months, being in the hospital for six months, especially kind of, you know, the first six months of your life, it's, it's, a, it's a big deal. Yeah. You know, he's, he'll be maybe babbling his first words and uh, reading his first books and uh, everything with with, uh, with, her, with his parents uh, at the bedside and with the nurses who are like day in and day out working hard to take care of him. What does recovery look like? So I imagine, you know, you have this massive surgery, you do the transplant and then they don't just get up and run out the door, right? It's how long? Well, uh, once they get the new heart, they're a totally different yeah. patient, a different person. So uh, our average uh, comes out to be about, you know, three weeks, okay. three to four weeks. The main, main thing is uh, the first 24, 48 hours are the most stormy. Um, once in a while we leave the chest open and close it later in the ICU. Uh, once the heart swelling goes down and the stormy period is done, and uh, then, then the process starts of taking the breathing tube out and coming down on the medications, uh, doing a first cath biopsy, making sure the body has accepted the heart and, uh, and uh, take it from there. 
the other thing I would just add is that um, you're calling him Jack Jack, which makes me think that you know you're not just a surgeon; you also have a level of compassion and care for your patients. And yeah, does that resonate? Yeah. yeah, that's how that's how I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm very very involved in the patient care. Even though they would go home after three weeks, but they are in a very close follow-up mm -hmm. for the first year or so. And then just the, the preparation for a transplant of this magnitude. I mean, is this weeks, is this month? Like, once you realize this can happen, it's got to happen quickly. But, it, I mean, what is that like, trying to prepare for the actual event? Uh, so we keep checking levels of antibodies, and we keep looking on the UNOS for offers. and. Once we pass the four month mark, we start getting offers mm -hmm. uh, of uh, donors that match. Okay. And then once the donors match, uh, we check uh, how the donor heart function is and how good a match is based on the size. And uh, once everything uh, is satisfactory, then uh, we say yes, we're gonna accept okay. that heart. Yeah, and then uh, the next uh, 48 hours are whirlwind. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. Yeah, and so um, very complicated with pediatrics given his size, right, to try to yes. find a donor, and yes. does that extend the length of time that some of these kids are waiting? Yes, it does, it does. We, we have dearth of donors, and uh, which is the reason. There, there are some technologies on the horizon uh, that uh, we're looking uh, forward to reaching uh, mm -hmm. fruition, uh, but uh, until then, uh, this is how it will be. Yeah. I would say this, they become almost like family, but over the period of six months, was uh, yeah. staying with him and taking his care. The nurses, the child life support, the OTPT, the physicians, the respiratory therapists, every single person. Uh, contributes immensely to patient care um, it, because as, as you can imagine his first six months will be here so he has to kind of undergo a normal development like a pediatric development milestones he has to achieve so uh, we, we make sure that he doesn't miss out on those while he's here and, and even the post-operative care I mean there'll be two nurses on their toes for the first 24, 48 hours. To make sure that's, it's successful. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's something. I mean, it, it's, it's not possible to achieve without the seamless teamwork uh, that, that, that we do. You, you have to be dedicated, uh, you have to be passionate, and you have to be good, you have to be skilled. There's this pediatric heart transplantation and pediatric cardiac care has very little margin of error. Sure. So you have to be good. So it's not only passionate and dedication, but you need to know the subject well. How long do you have after a donor heart is matched to get it to Jack? It varies uh, from uh, a transplant to transplant because uh, there are orga other organs to be placed. So we wait for them to place other organs. Uh, it's typically 24 hours, 48 hours. You get that phone call, and like you said, it's that whirlwind you were talking about, right? Yeah, and you're yeah, go, go, yeah, go. Yeah, we, we have, uh, we give a heads up to everyone on the, on the concerned who, who would be involved in, in that transplant. And they wait for timings in, in the sense that this is the time the team is going out, this is the time Jack Jack will go to the OR, this is the approximated time the heart will arrive. The heart is safe and good on ice for about four hours so it, we have to suture the heart in the chest and make it beat in that time period oh my so we have to time everything in that fashion how do you manage that stress so i'm hearing you and it, it does does having logistics planned out perfectly help manage stress or what how, how does that even work stress i think is straining mm -hmm. is doing this over and over again until you're, you're the person responsible for it and, uh, and then you don't feel the stress because you have done the drill several times. Mm -hmm. So I think I manage stress mainly by subjecting myself to a good deal of training mm -hmm. and then it's kind of the checkpoints and it's, it's like airline industry, mm -hmm. you know, check, check, check. So yeah. we have checklists so 
there, since as I said, there's no margin of error. We don't we don't have a retake, so um, we have to be right first time.